Today's episode of Tech Talk is on how to replace a motor on a B-series board. All right. So once again, got my B10, and we are going to replace this motor. Say it's gone bad. Say that's basically the only reason you'd replace a motor. Um, and you know our motors are they're built really really well, so it's it's not a likely occurrence. But in case it is, this video will show you how to do it. So a couple things to note on motors: there are we got a couple kind of different motor mounts that have come out over the years and some will allow you to um, to easily remove your motor from the uh, motor mounts and this is an example of that it's got a large hole right here so actually you'll see that the pulley uh, will actually fit through that hole um, so that's that's great in that case you can just replace the motor itself nice and easy if that's not the case, um, then you're going to need to do a little more extensive process. You're going to, when you replace your motor, you'll replace your whole kind of um, hanger and motor mount assembly. So um, you just, what you want to do is check before you uh, call to, to buy a replacement motor um, to tell us which one you have so that we know what to send you. Um, and this is an example of, of maybe an older style that doesn't quite fit through. You can actually remove this, but it's it's difficult. It's more something that our tech people would do. So, you know, if you're doing it yourself, then you're better off just replacing that whole back assembly. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to show you the more extensive of the two, which is replacing this, this back assembly. So my recommendation is to, when you're replacing that, just I just do the hanger itself, because it's just one bolt where the kingpin is, rather than doing four bolts where um, your base plate's connected to the deck. T-tool. The large size, go ahead and remove, I'll get it to where you guys can see, but all I'm doing is taking this kingpin nut off. Like so. Uh, remove the bushing, and go ahead and remove this truck. Just slide it off the kingpin there, yeah. No worries. Okay, now what you'll see is the, the next step of the process is to actually re remove the heat shrink tubing that's um, covering the motor wires, okay? Now the heat shrink tubing, is, it's mainly there as kind of an extra security. It's not, um, you know, I guess it's not technically essential. This, this is a pretty waterproof connection. It's not something that really matters as far as water goes, but um, we do it just kind of as an extra precaution to keep it all nice and tight. Um, so the, the different ways to do that, but my recommendation is looking through your tool bag to find um, some wire clippers. Okay, like I said, look through your tool bag to find some wire clippers. So this is my favorite tool for the job. You can actually do it with, um, you can do it with scissors as well. And the other option, which I don't, I don't like as much, is doing it with a blade. Okay, the only reason I don't like doing it with a blade, you can do it with a blade, but you know, if you are, then make sure that you're cutting kind of like up and away from the motor wire so the blade's actually kind of facing out and make sure you're not, I mean be, be careful with it um, but you'd be going in there and kind of like cutting out gradually okay I just don't like people going and cutting down into it because you're likely to, um, to cut one of your motor wires so if you are using a blade that's my tech tip of the day for that um, if you're using scissors it's actually you know pretty safe you're just kind of going in there and clipping bam and um, the only thing with scissors is it's hard to get leverage, so these actually give you a little bit more leverage to actually make the clip. So here's an example, if you're doing it with scissors, you're just going to come in there and, and cut through. This one's pretty easy actually. If you're doing it with your wire clippers, then it's the same basic thing. Um, and you're just going to finish, I'll finish the job on this just to show you. So it's just kind of clip, 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 and it just gives you a little more um, leverage to get the job done. Once you got the last one, that all kind of comes loose. Okay, so once you have that assembly removed, you're going to want to remove all the all the parts that aren't the uh, the hanger and the motor mount. So 
um, essentially your your pulley cover you're gonna want to use again and your wheels and all that type of stuff so that's just um, that's this process here like I've shown in other videos getting your wheels off is just a twist and a pull at the same time don't be too eager to, to pull off just twist and pull at the same time and that'll come off nice and easy um, same thing with this guy this guy is just standard those aside because you'll use them later and then the last one is just removing the pulley cover because like I said that's something that you can use over no sense buying a new um, pulley cover All right, and that's pretty much that. okay. so you got your pulley cover off belt saving all that for later and that there if you're doing the um, the whole replacement that's basically gonna be discarded that's your old guy then you're going to take in your, your new one and just basically do the whole process in reverse. Um, now, one of the most, I guess, not the most difficult things, but if you if you do choose, like I said, the, the heat shrink tubing isn't absolutely essential. So if you're struggling with that, you can get by without it. Um, but we like to put it on there just because, like I said, it kind of keeps it all nice and tight and secure. Um, it's not so much a waterproofing thing, but... You know, it is more just a security. Or if you know, you could always use duct tape. That doesn't quite look as good. But uh, in this case, we're going to go ahead and do the uh, the heat shrink tubing. So I'll just show you how to do that real quick. Okay, so I got my heat shrink tubing. Just a you know small. That's about oh, that's about two inches, so maybe 50 mil um, slice there. So first thing to do is actually you want to slide it over the motor wires first. So um, the motor wires are actually connected to the motor, not the ones that are connected to your battery box, all right? The only reason is that there's not a lot of room on here, so that will make it difficult to actually make your connection. So slide it onto these motor wires here. And you want to push it back as far as you can, basically just to give you a little extra room to kind of make the connection, all right? Now, th there's a couple things. On, on single drive boards, it's actually pretty easy to do this because it doesn't matter what order you put these wires in, okay? So you can just make a, any random connection for the three, all right? Okay, so make sure these guys are in nice and firm, and then you're just gonna wiggle and slide your heat shrink tubing down over the connection to where it's nice and evenly covering both sides, okay? Now don't heat shrink it quite yet, okay? We're gonna get our assembly back together and then um, and do that as actually a last step, all right? So now I've got my heat shrink tubing co covering the motor wire connection. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, reassemble this. All right, so I got my, uh, my base plate there. I need to put my first um, base kind of barrel bushing on there, which I got there. Then pop my hanger on, nice and secure. And then again, pop your top bushing on, your kingpin washer, and last but not least, your kingpin nut. Okay. Yeah. T tool, large side. Getting this guy, yeah, nice and tight. You want to make sure, I mean, at least go to where the, uh, the threads are poking through the nut. So you want it to be at least flush, but from there, once you ride, you're going to know, do you need to stiffen it up if you're getting, getting a wheel bite or anything like that, or it's just way too loose, not stable, then you're going to want to tighten it up. If it's too stiff and you want it looser, then go the opposite. But um, at least you need to make sure that the kingpin threads are engaging the nylock section of that nut, just to make sure it doesn't come loose while you're riding. Okay, from there, time to put your wheels on. So I'm gonna do my non-drive wheel first. First thing you do is slide your speed washer onto the axle. Then you're gonna pop your wheel on. And once again, the uh, you're gonna want some type of small tool to go in and get that spacer centered in there so that it slides on nice and easy. All right, once you got that, you're gonna apply your other speed washer onto the axle. All right. And then your axle nut onto the axle. And tighten it up using the small socket of your T-tool. It's got the space in there, so you can crank down pretty good, but just make sure you actually get some, it's not binding or sounding weird or anything like that. Then the next one to do is your drive side. I've shown this in a couple other videos, but we'll just do it real quick here. Um, you have your drive wheel. 
Uh, so the first thing you want to do once again is to apply your speed washer on there just so you have it on. And then the next thing is you set your belt aside for uh, in the earlier step. So go ahead and set your belt on there. Uh, drive wheel. And we've done, like I said, we've done this a few times before. Make sure your uh, spacer is centered. Just kind of slide it on there until it slides on. I'll get to where you can see it maybe a little bit better there. Now this one is just, once again, it's, it's a pushing and twisting process at the same time. But the make, main thing is just to make sure that you kind of twist it enough to where it's going to catch. You can twist it one way and then twist it the other way. Sometimes I'll, if it's not catching one way, start twisting it the other way and it'll catch it a little bit easier. And that was, once again, how it happened in this case. So right now it's just barely on the bottom. And if you just gently push and twist at the same time, it just slides right on. Okay. Yeah. And once it's kind of nice and secure on there, you are going to apply your other speed washer and your other axle nut. tool. You're good to go. Now the last step, you have this all, it's everything secure. Um, the last step of this process would be to put your pulley cover back on. So what I do uh, when I'm doing my pulley covers, I drop my uh, screws into the holes first. Um, you can do it either way. You can line it up first and then drop your screws in. That's easy. Doing that just kind of helps me locate the um, locate the holes as I put it on there. So then I go and just do it until they drop. And you see all those guys are lined up. Also the outside will be nice and flush, you know, if there's like a big gap between them then things aren't lined up quite right. But once you have that, then you're just giving these guys a good tighten. And there you have it. That is a uh, motor replacement on a B-series board. So if you got any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments section below. We're always happy to get your feedback. Anything you want to let us know, we'll improve it for the future. And hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with future Tech Talks with me, R&D Lee.